What is good? We're back, back in two separate areas. This is weird again. I'm in back in the jail cell <laughs> behind me. And in, in, uh, what's the famous Alcatraz? What's the famous uh, mm. prison? That's the only one. Uh, I'm up north. Shawshank. I'm up, Shawshank. I'm up north. Shawshank. Yeah, back in back in the prison setting here. Um, Shish kebab. <laughs> Jason's in his Chicago <laughs> regular setting. Um, our our wives are at a uh, a dinner, and both of us have the children, so we couldn't couldn't get out to get together. Uh, so we're we're doing it digitally here over uh, the the waves because uh, we wanted to get a couple more videos in before the season started. We'll be doing a, a little mock here, one more before the season starts. But there's some injuries, and we had some cuts, so we're gonna do an injury video here and talk about those guys, redraft and dynasty, and uh, we'll talk about cuts in the next video. How much time you got, buddy? Plenty, tons. How are you That's doing, indeed. Casey? I'm doing very well. Are you yes. thriving? I am eh? thriving. Good. Thank eh? you for mentioning that. We've uh, we've partnered up with Thrive Fantasy, um, a new fa- gaming daily fantasy sports and esports app for player props. So you can go into your uh, app app store or Play Store, and you can download that app and. It's all about player props and tournaments. Uh, I've had a fun Tournament, time. Tournaments. 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 But we wanted to mention them and and get them in everybody's head and, and coming out of their mouths like, hey, have you seen Thrive? Are, are you thriving? Because I'm thriving. I don't know if that's going to become a thing that, that are, if you're thriving. Tell them about the promotion. Tell them about the promotion. <laughs> throbbing. Um, so we got our promo code. <laughs> our promo code for for Thrive Fantasy is going to be the FFD, all caps, all one word. You can go over there; uh, they'll match your your deposit up to a hundred dollars. Um, so go ahead over there, use our promo code. Basically, let them know that we sent you over there and and help your boys out. Let them know that we're driving traffic over to their website. They've partnered up with the Jaguars, uh, Jaguars. The um, FFD, all caps, one word. Check it out. Check it out. Good job. Way to save us there. Let's get into these injuries. Yeah. All right. So we just had a slew of injuries. Some of them are a little older. Some of them are a little newer. We've had, obviously, Acres went down a little earlier. We've been doing redraft stuff and kind of getting the, the hang of where Henderson goes. But since these new injuries with Dobbin and ET, I was on vacation. We didn't do a, a, a mock last week for redraft stuff so we wasn't sure where the robinson thing landed and dobbins obviously is brand new so we want to go through these guys talk about the dynasty impact and then we want to talk about the redraft uh aspect of this and kind of where they fall um so just i guess off the rip you know i don't know if we've ever asked this question we haven't really broke down acres and and henderson just that we've been big henderson supporters this offseason and where we could get them and it was you know now the the value is gone um and i'm all in on henderson but are you scared of any of these guys that have gotten the injury, the acres, Achilles, the ET Liz Frank or the Gus ACL? We're not sure if there's more damage. Uh, LCL Dobbins ACL. ACL. Kind of Let's no, no Gus ACL. Sorry. Yeah. You got your mouth. My bad. Dub, that Dobbins, shit right. Casey Dobbins ACL. So, I mean, obviously the Achilles has got to be the biggest concern. That's, that's the most severe the Liz Frank is also pretty rare, uh, but if anyone can come back from an injury with good, smart work ethic rehab, it's Travis Etienne. So I'm going to say I'm not too worried about that. ACL is an ACL. I mean, that shit happens all the time. You know, Akers would be the only one I'm a little bit weary of because I wasn't super high on him, and it's an right. Achilles. That's I think it makes for both of us. We Neither one the, were the highest of people out there on Akers in general. Um, and I think it just makes it easier that the, the injuries that has a little bit more pause to it when you hear about it, like, Oh, some guys don't come back from that. Whereas, you know, most ACLs are, you know, sometimes it comes back stronger. If this was like a first occurrence and, and it wasn't like a really, really bad ACL seems like maybe it was just, okay, just, just nothing super crazy. Maybe a little LCL damage, who knows? Uh, but yeah, like you said, it makes it makes it easier for us to be like maybe Acres is the one that I would still be scared of because I just don't think we liked him. So that there's probably just some bias built into there. But I think everybody's more weary of the the uh, Achilles of of all those injuries. So I think that's fair. All right. 
Well, what do you do? What do you do? Let's talk some dynasty. What do you do with one of these guys if you have them on your team? You know, let's say you're you're ready to go. You had Dobbins, you had ET, you had Acres. They were maybe your second RB or your flex, or maybe you're stacked and you were you were really banking on riding those guys to to a, a playoff berth. What do you do? What do you do if you have them? You trying to go get their handcuff? Basically, you trying to go potentially overpay for their handcuff? <laughs> Yeah, so I think hopefully, you know, in a lot of these cases, I would have definitely, those are all handcuffs that had standalone value. Um, and I like all the handcuffs that were there. So those would have been guys that I would have been targeting to get on my team if I had those guys. Um, so obviously, we're talking about Gus, uh, Gus, the Gus Bus, Gus Edwards, right. James Robinson, and Daryl Henderson, right? right? Those are the guys where do you go, do you go pay for those guys? And what do you pay? So hopefully you, you kind of had had that already and you don't have to have this discussion. But I mean, I think if you're feeling really good about your team, um, I'm, I'm OK with and you're, you're ready to go. And maybe you made a late run or even won it last year and, and you feel like you haven't really lost anything. But maybe you gained some pieces in the offseason through the rookie draft or whatever. Um, I'm OK. I'm always going to be OK with shipping off things to stay competitive and try to win. I'm okay with what the Jaguars or what the, yeah, the Jaguars with what the Rams do. I was okay with what the saints do. I'm okay with those teams that push it down the line. Eventually you're going to have to pay the Piper, but I'll pay the Piper when my team doesn't have this window right now. And, and I have confidence that I can rebuild within a year or two. And it's not this crazy long thing where I'm just mediocre for years. Um, so yeah, I'd be okay with trying to give up the first to chase one of those guys down with the caveat of, yeah, I'm not, I'm not just going to give the first stuff. I'm going to try to maybe gain. I, we talked about you it. You got to give me that second back. Right. We talked about, we were on the dynasty war zone last night. So shout out to Memphis and, and Jerry Sinclair there and their yeah. show that they do a great job over there. Talked about it a little bit. I'm a, always a big advocate of when doing trades, I'm always trying to work that one, two swap or the two, three swap or the fourth, the three, four swap or whatever it is. Like I'm always trying to figure out how to make that value uh, work out for me. And it, it always seems like in a lot of cases, it's, it's a lot easier to get something done when, when that swap is involved. And if it's a team that is selling one of those handcuffs who just walked into some value, maybe they're not really ready to win necessarily. Cause I think if you're ready to win, you're not, maybe not trying to sell off those guys, or maybe you're a guy like big co that sees the opportunity uh, that, that the value just went up and that you're, you're highly inclined to sell when you see those things. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm down with it. I'm down with so it. You, so you'd Go give up a first, get back the second for Gus Edwards, James Robinson, and Daryl Henderson. Anyone I think so. Guys. If I, if I felt good about my team and I was ready if to you go, have the, if I'm you just, have the guy or, or if you're just ready to go without, say you don't have Dobbins ET or acres, are you trying to trade for one of these dudes with that? So same maybe, trade? maybe, maybe you might be even a little inclined. Like, I feel like if you have the guy, maybe the person who's, who had the hand, if you had the Dobbins and the person who owns the Gus, and, and let's just use that as an example. Maybe they'd be trying to squeeze a little more value out of you because they think they got you up against the wall. And maybe you, you could get it slightly cheaper from somebody else. I don't feel uh, some type of way on any of those guys. Like, I think even if I didn't have Dobbins, I'm OK with getting Gus. If I did have Dobbins, I'm OK with getting Gus like, and giving up the first and giving up the first. And, and trying to get a second and working, right. working a deal where I'm just not just solely just giving up the first. I can, I'm re getting some value back because look, all those guys had standalone value. Gus had standalone value. I, I feel really strong about his role. I was fine with putting him on the team. Robinson was going to have standalone value. I feel good about, I, and I like all of the players and I love Henderson and you know, all these injuries, maybe they, they can linger into another season. And all, I felt like all these guys were going to have roles and, and Henderson, I thought was going to have a really big role, a much bigger role than I thought, um, you know, Robinson bigger role than other people thought no one right. wanted to give Henderson a bunch of carries, but he was absolutely going to get work even with acres in there. So, and then even if you went and traded for those guys and let's say like, maybe it works out, you win the championship, maybe you don't. But maybe you got those guys from somebody. Maybe you pulled off the two, three swap and had to, or the one, two swap and had to give up some other stuff to make it work. Uh, so you got to do everything that you can to try to make that work. But at the end of the day, like maybe you ended up with two, four uh, because that guy's team wasn't very good or two, three or you took another player off his team. So his his team got worse. 
Um, maybe it's two, three, two, 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 one. Uh, but also like, and the those first guys you're trading, you're competing is one, eight or higher. One, I would assume that's one, eight or, or lower, I guess, however you want to look at that. But Gus Robinson and Henderson are all still going to have those kind of roles next year where they're on like the same team r- on the exact same team. So Robinson, you know, it's not like any of them are going to lose their role on their team. Um, and I think at the end of the day, you could probably end up selling those guys back for another second plus some more and end up with, with two twos and, and a little something extra. And, and maybe you got to make a run. And if you have those guys as, as now you have their handcuffs. So I, I feel like it's a pretty good win-win situation. I'm not going to overpay for those guys by any means, but if I can work out a deal to figure it out. And I think, like you said, the, the first, with the swaps in there. I'm okay Gotta with it. I'm okay with back. paying to fucking play. It's not just sit back and be passive and, and, and never try to go win that when you have those windows, go for it. And I get right. it. The first is good currency, but like you, I could sit out for a year on first and have a couple seconds. And then if, if I trade that and get the two twos, maybe I could turn the two twos and something else into another first. So it's so like late first, early right. second, something like that. You can You're, find a guy. So, yeah, I mean, I uh, would absolutely, overpay like a little bit if I have the hurt player and I can go get the handcuff. I don't want to overpay if I don't have the hurt player, but I'm still down to do that one, two swap. Um, and I want to get the two back too. Even if I have the player, I think that's a great little trade to get any one of these guys that you're targeting. Um, but let's take it to another aspect of it. Let's say you're a rebuilding team, right? And you're not chasing the championship or, you you know, you're not ready to go. And now you see an opening where an owner might be willing to come off of one of these young stud ish running backs that, I mean, they're studs. Um, and they're fairly young. I mean, ET is going to be like 23 and a half coming in the next year. You know, I Mm -hmm. don't really care. I still want to get ET. And so if I'm not like ready to go, I'm interested in getting one of these dudes and putting them down on my bench. Um, would you Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. I'm not scared off by too many of the injuries. Never Cam, scared. Never scared. Uh, we ain't never makers. scared. Straight not, never, facts. Not never. Not now. Not ever. Mm-mm. Um. But yeah, no, you can't. You can't go. Like I said, if if you were one of these teams trading them away, like you don't want to trade. You don't want to trade away your picks. Like I was saying, like right. oh, maybe you could. Maybe you can get that player for one of the these these losing teams who's trying to sell off because they're rebuilding picks. Um, but if I'm that team, I'm not going to do that because I, my if I'm giving these guys away, my picks are getting um, necessarily worse. And then, you know, I would I'm fine with buying the ET, the Acres, and the Gus on the losing side of things and not giving away the picks, but giving away maybe some veterans that are going to score points on somebody else's team, like, uh, right. like an Adam Thielen. Um, that's just a, just you brought a guy, Chris that, Carson the other guy day. that came to mind. Uh, yeah. Chris Carson. Uh, right. And, and so, yeah, shout older. out to the dynasty, dynasty war zone again, Jerry and, and Memphis for having us on. That was a blast. We kind of talked about this and, and like the conclusion we came to was like, if you're not a contender, you can't go trade your pick. You can't go trade next year's pick for these players. You have to give up a player who's going to be scoring points in your Julio lineup Jones. this year. Julio, absolutely. Tyler Lockett, absolutely. If I could trade either one of those dudes for any of these running backs, see ya. You're f- like, yeah. And, and I'll give up more, too. Like, Well, I'll- that's what I like. Maybe you have to give up, uh, you know, Thielen and and you know, another older running back to, to get, and then you get a little extra back with the player, but I'm fine with that. Like you're making right. moves cause you're rebuilding and you're getting this right. guy. And, and these guys are just going to hurt your overall, right? You ship off points that are going to be in your lineup this year. And that's just going to help increase your draft pick. So you keep your draft pick, ship off points and get one of these young studs. That's the process of rebuilding. If that's what you have to do. Right. And I, I love it. I'll take any one of them, but I want Dobbins and ET first for sure. Me too, hundred percent. And I'm slightly weary on Acres, but I I'm think probably I'm not trading for Acres, man. I'm, I'm just gonna be honest. Like I'm probably that's not fair. trading for Acres. Uh, we weren't big Acres guys anyway, so it's it again. It just makes it easy for us to to out. But if I had Acres, I want Henderson, and I still want Henderson if I don't have Acres. So, all right, I like it. I like it. Um, let's move to the redraft side of this thing. Okay. You got anything else on the dynasty? I don't think so. There's nothing else on the show sheet. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's pull up some dynasty adp or some redraft adp here well d- um, so 
you I see uh, uh, straight facts down there. When did you want to bring those straight facts into this conversation? Because probably could have used it a little earlier, but we could talk about it now. Let's see, let's let's do Gus's Gus Gus Edwards uh, redraft stuff now. And we'll, and okay. we'll bring up that 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 stat. We'll pull there. Up the ADP. Let's see where's Gus because I think Gus is the cheapest out of these guys, right? So so let's take it to the the redraft side of things. How much? Do you spend on these handcuffs? How far yes. do they move up these ranks? So you're this looking at fantasy pros. Figure out. So yeah, on fantasy pros, Gus Edwards is ADP 77 right now, which probably will Dobbins be coming is not up. on the board. So this is adjusted for Dobbins. Dobbins is not. On, you can't. You do a control F. Dobbins not there. Right. So I would assume Gus would maybe climb a little bit more. Maybe it's a little too fresh to. To quite have him exactly I mean, where you it would got be. rid of Dobbins, it's fresh. It's, it's all right, fair. You gotta fair. move. Maybe they don't have enough data. Mm, there's always there's too much data. That's the problem. <laughs> all right. So, so you so RB31. So where would you take cheap. Gus here? Way where would higher. you take Gus? So let's just go up the list, right? Ron, I'm gonna I'm gonna read off running backs that are above Gus Edwards. Ronald Jones, gimme yes. Gus all day. Yep. Uh let's see. Who's Melvin Gordon? Yep. Gus all day. Javante Williams, Damian Harris. Let me get Gus. Let me get Gus. It's the Patriots. I mean, I like. We'll, we'll talk about cam, the Cam cut in the next video, and and whether that's good for the running backs or bad. We can make either argument. I think it's probably good, but it's still the Patriots running backs. They still got James White. They got Ramondre, who's looking good. Let me have Gus, man. I know. Gus, give me the, is, give me the, give me the bus. Give me Gus, Gus Edwards or Raheem Mostert. Feels like when Mostert's in there and doing his thing, he's going to be uh, scoring scoring some some points. You you got a little glimpse Give of it Gus. there in that in that last game there, the preseason game with the Niners, how good this could be. But oh yeah, my god, I that think, was so fantastic watching that game, Gus. watching that first series with freaking just rotating them boys in and out, and then Jimmy G gets a rushing touchdown. He's like, what the fuck? Oh, you lost the light. I did. I lost the light. <laughs> Got to right. get a better suction. Yeah. We're back on there. All right. All right. Uh, so, yeah. Give me Gus. Give me Gus. Gus over Chase Edmonds for sure. Gus over Chase Edmonds. Mike Davis. That's a close call there. I, I'm I'm okay if you want to say Mike Davis. Give me but Gus. I think, but I think I would probably move Mike Davis up this up this list one or two guys too, though. So, before we come to our conclusion. is Kareem Hunt and Miles Gaskin. So I would probably bump Gaskin down a f a below Mike Davis. I would take uh, Gus above Miles Gaskin, and I'll take then. I guess give me Gus over Mike Davis, but it seems like Mike Davis is just gonna get a whole lot of run. Um, give me Gus Edwards. But yeah, I mean, I, give me who, the Gus who, bus. Who else was behind? May, you know, maybe they use a little rotation of of Justice Hill and and Taysen Sure Williams the, there, like they, they were like going. Like I don't expect rotation. them to just say, "Hey, all of a sudden we're just only going to use Gus." They were planning on using a rotation with both of those guys. But I like listen. You ready for these straight facts? Are you just ready for this? Gus I, is one of two players in NFL history to produce at least seven hundred rushing yards and average five yards uh per carry five yard five per pl five yards plus per carry in the first three seasons of his career only one of so, two players in nfl history right so nick chubb who's is the, the other, only other person well that so that two players that settles it those are two players facts in nfl history 700 rushing yards and average more than five yards per carry two guys Over nick chubb yards a carry and Gus Edwards. I For mean, three straight those seasons. those are just straight facts. That's I can't. I can't. It just doesn't get more factual than that. Um, could you not keep it so real, Casey? I mean, I just I can't. Is can't there any way I mean, that you could keep it lights, less real? I mean, I just we're keeping it rolling while the lights falling off. That that's real. So real. So real. No cuts. <laughs> but so I mean. Gus has been nothing but great when he's been out there. And and yeah, the reason that you were maybe a little down on Dobbins is because the PPR wasn't quite there and they're saying they want to throw it some more. You want to keep Lamar Jackson a little bit more healthy, a little bit more out of harm's way. You get him to check it down a little bit more. I think Gus is perfectly capable of catching the football um, and maybe it's not anything crazy, but he's on a top 
tier offense that's going to score a lot of points and he's going to run it in. He's going to get a ton of volume. He's the one a in this, the one a and B. And I think now you're going to, there's going to be some C's in the, in the offense, picking up some scraps and you know, maybe they do sign a Todd Gurley or somebody like along those lines or I could see him picking up a Wayne Gallman um, Mm. and and, uh, that kind of guy there and go Tigers. But yeah, I, I think Gus is a great talent. Uh, he was kind of, that's why you're, that's why you spend the, the 10th, 11th, 12th round, 13th round pick on, on Gus in, in your dynasty formats and in redraft it's because he is good and he was going to get run. And he was, he was very solid last year from a point standpoint. And obviously uh, one of two guys with over 700 yards and, and averaging more than five yards to carry in his first three seasons in the NFL and, and Nick Chubb's pretty good company. So Gus bus. Under and I think, so I think as we go through these other guys, they're all going to end up around the same for us, but let's, let's do that same exercise. So all right, let's take Henderson. All right, Henderson. So let's go. <laughs> Hendo is right behind Mike Davis. We don't even, yeah. Okay. All right. So he's a little higher up to start off. So right behind yep. Mike Davis, Henderson all day. Yeah. Henderson all day. Let's see. Kareem hunt. Hendo. Hendo. Hendo over Miles Gaskin. Hendo over Miles Gaskin. And then James Robinson is the next guy. James Robinson. Hendo or James Robinson? Give me Hendo! Yeah, there's no Sony in, in Jacksonville, but there is no, a Carlos. There's a Carlos. Yeah, man. <laughs> and it's not as good of an offense, although... Although, man, listen, listen. So this is where the this is where a good discussion can come in here about. Yeah, we can just bring on. Robinson in here because obviously, like Robinson, all over over all those other guys, right? Robinson over over yeah. uh, Kareem, yeah. Robinson over well, who else? Uh, Gaskin, Miles Gaskin, and, yeah, Mike Davis. Let me get James Robinson, right? Mm-hmm. But James Robinson versus Hendo, right? <laughs> You would say that the Rams offense is so much better, right? But if you look back the last year, James Robinson did all that work behind the poor offensive line. But same same back. offensive line. They're all same back. offensive line. So they everyone hates on the offensive line, but Robinson There's, was just fine behind that offensive line. But the continuity is there, and you're right. He put up a magnificent season for an undrafted free agent or anyone. And you would really. think that the Jags offense, regardless of offensive line situation, will improve. They have to be better. They will definitely be better with Trevor Lawrence. That's not probably, even a question. There's going to be some growing pain games, but like you just saw that glimpse of Trevor and on those first couple of games. Down. And James will Robinson dump it can down. catch it. He, did, he had some PPR floor last year. And yeah. it, it, they're only going to... They have to be better. There's no way the Jags aren't better on offense. So you could certainly make the argument for a little bit more playing from behind, kind of check it down kind of stuff, but maybe maybe takes away from some of the amount of run actual run plays that you're going to get and probably not the TD upside quite as where a Henderson and a Gus Edwards would, would come into play because, quite frankly, those are probably two of the top five to seven, eight rushing, rushing offenses in the league. We know we love McVay and his rushing scheme. We know when it's popping, it's popping and you, there's big plays to be had and they can run all over you. And we know the Ravens are pretty much the best rushing team in the league because of Mar Jackson. And they're just a well-oiled machine. And all they keep doing is just improving everything. Um, and the Ravens are ridiculous. So I feel like I got to give those two guys a little bit of the nod because I like the talent almost equally as much as uh, between them all. And then if you're going to tell me those two situations, I guess I like those situations a little better. Um, but I would definitely put Gus as the Gus is the third man on the totem pole. And I, I guess I would give, I, I, I go Daryl James uh, Gus bus. And I think that would basically be the next, like after here it's Deandre Swift to have, they have Miles Sanders and then Deandre Swift, like, I think after that, I would, that's where I would basically just put those three guys right underneath them. Yeah. Um, and maybe I would even take Henderson, James Robinson, and possibly even Gus over Miles Sanders. They did just cut Howard and they did carry on. And so, but I mean, Hertz can rush it in, but Miles is probably getting the goal line work. He'll get some PPR floor. It's certainly not out of the question that all three of those guys could finish above Miles Sanders. I'm probably taking a wide receiver where I would take Miles Sanders and let me get one of these guys in the next round. You know what I mean? Well, we haven't brought in the wide receiver discussion. It was just solely running backs to keep it. I just don't want to take Miles Sanders, really. 
kind of. So I'm, also, I'm already going to have two running backs, and then I need a wide receiver maybe. And then I can still get one of these guys in the fourth, fifth round. Right. And so, I don't know what order I would put him in, man. How do you not put James Robinson first with the season he had last year on a better offense? He was like RB nine, something like that last year. Yeah, like, but if you're gonna if you're gonna give me the 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 lead dog on that Rams offense for an entire season and being as uh, electric and as a big of a heavy hitter as haven't as seen Henderson, Henderson be, stay healthy for a year, James Robinson just bang that shit out. Yeah, I mean, but you know, anything could happen. I'm not gonna base my my decision off that. So, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. take the electric guy in the steadier offense uh, and I'm going to take Henderson. Like basically like wherever you, I was going to take or anybody was going to take Cam Akers. I don't understand why you wouldn't be taking Daryl Henderson in that same slot because Sony is not as good as Daryl Henderson was. And if Sony eats a little bit into there and he's getting over there late, I mean, whatever. And Daryl Henderson, I thought was always going to have a role and he was going to eat more of, of that workload up. And I feel like Henderson's got just even more workload put on his place that has just a crazy ceiling to him. And I, I thought in watching the two going back and forth, when we talked about this a few months ago, like I fucking loved what I saw from Daryl Henderson last year. So right. give me Henderson. He arguably looked better on the field or at least as good as acres ever right. did, which is why I'm saying wherever you were taking acres and redraft, I'm fine with basically just swapping out Henderson. Endo. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know which one. you don't have to. So, I think you could probably wait an extra round of where you were taking acres to where you're taking Henderson and probably right. too. Cause you were probably, more, taking- yeah, people aren't dude. He's so cheap. People hate right. Henderson. They always hated Henderson. They never liked him. They never gave him any. Well, they, they love a lot. Some people loved him. Acres. Some people <laughs> loved him in that first season, but this is the patience thing in dynasty where he fades away and he sucks now because he wasn't any good when it's like, well, he needed a little bit of time. He was super raw and he just keeps getting a little better, but he still has that electric factor to him. So acres skyrocketed to like four, the top half Six. of the first round yeah. in dynasty leagues because people literally think that, that that Henderson was a healthy scratch the final games of the season and he was on IR. <laughs> people right. literally were tweeting at us like Henderson didn't even get any run week 17 of the playoffs. He was on IR. <laughs> he was on IR. Yeah. Watch the yeah. games. Yeah, he was Watch good. The fucking games. Henderson is a, is is just as good as Acres is. I'll fuck so at me. At Come you. get him. Come get him. Suck Come it. get him. Let's go. All right. Well, yeah, Rocky start. Go to Achilles. Rocky start on the thrive there on the thrive buy in. <laughs> the FFD. We'll, we'll get better at the uh, at selling the FFD on Thrive. Yeah. All caps, one word. Help your boys out. Go check it out. It's really fun. Thrive Fantasy on the on any of your app stores and all that kind of stuff had a fun time here talking about some injuries um so we're gonna do a quick little video on some cuts so if you're watching this go ahead and click on that next video and and hit that subscribe button hit that subby button in the noty the subby in the noty and then leave yeah. a comment and if you want to leave a thumbs down leave a comment just get it out just get it all out in the comment section because hey so gus edwards either way is the only is there's only two players in NFL history who've had at least 700 history. yards on average, more than five yards per carry in his first three seasons. The others, Nick Chubb, just wanted to end on straight facts. Pew, 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 pew. I don't have the soundboard with me. <laughs> All right, Charles, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Peace. Ooh, a little, little different here without any. Uh, usually, now you've been cueing me in with music. Any? I know they got a big tournament for 20 bucks. Uh, 20k for the first prize out of that $20 entry and uh, and uh, you can win 20k for the uh, for the first place there. This is a, this is a very bad job of, of selling them right now, but it's the first time <laughs> and I'm not reading the sheet they gave me.